Welcome, welcome back. Remember the hashtag as always is hashtag entrepreneurship Tuesday. At why in the morning is uh, the place to be at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, I guarantee you it's an interview. It's a conversation that you want to stick around for, especially if you're into uh, content creation. You and I understand at this particular time, the world has become a global village and anything that you put out in terms of content, it doesn't it doesn't go viral or it doesn't get to be known okay out of just by chance all right so it's there's a whole strategy that goes be, uh, behind the scene to come up with uh, uh, good content and uh, a viral one by that by that so in studio i am joined with a content uh, creator isaac uh, sorry uh, innocent i don't know my director is called isaac <laughs> <laughs> My guest today is called Innocent Matara. He is a content creator and a good one uh, by that. So he'll be taking us on the aspect of what it takes when it comes to viral marketing and how to, you know, craft good content that can sell you out there, give you leads and also sales at the same time. Karibu sana, Innocent. Asante sana. All right. So uh, for anyone who's meeting you for the first time, if there's anything that I've missed on your bio, uh, briefly take us through who Innocent Matara is, uh, his educational background as well. Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, my name is Innocent Matara. I'm a, I'm a content creator and a digital marketer with six years experience working for Standard Group as a TV producer stroke director. Uh, then I have a diploma in marketing from the Kenya Institute of Management. So what happened is after I got my diploma, I got an internship with the Standard Group where now uh, I've been working for the last six years as a TV producer. Then during this COVID season, I got, I got a training from the US Embassy about digital strategy and also I enrolled for a diploma in social media management from the Allison College. So after I thought I was certified, I decided now to try it out as a whole. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've been to the media space for a span of six years. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So uh, when would you say that you're genuine when it comes to content marketing all began and who are the people that you work with mostly uh, in your line of work? Okay, and uh, now maybe if defining the content, we say we have different types of content that people put across out there. Mm -hmm. We have the blogs, people write. We have videos for people who do now the visuals. We have graphics, infographics. We have now, the, for the videos now, that, that is where now the IG, the TikTok, Facebook, YouTube falls. So anyone who's doing anything informative is creating content. Mm -hmm. If you are creating something that is giving information to the public out there, you are a content creator. Mm -hmm. So my journey, let's say, has been content creation for TV, but mm -hmm. since COVID, I've now settled on now doing content for social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now it's like COVID has forced people now to go to social media, making, like you were saying, making the world a global village. So I decided now it, it was time to tap into social media because having the knowledge of TV production and also a background in marketing, now it was a good time for me to position myself as a social media content creator and marketer. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. You know, for anyone who creates content, be it for YouTube, any other social media platform, okay. I, I think one of the key things they always tell you out there when you do your research is know your audience. So yeah. how do you know that these particular people, I am catering for this particular audience? And also they say that you draw in traffic. So what is the difference between uh, knowing your audience and actually traffic there? Okay, well, um, the first step when creating, when you start creating a content is to ask yourself, what is the type, 
what is this type of content that I would like to share out there. So the content will determine the market. For example, if you are doing, let's say, content about how to do makeup, then automatically your audience will be the ladies and the female the female around yeah, you know if if you're doing content like for makeup and you're targeting men it's a bit <laughs> awkward yeah so the content ideally determines the market mm -hmm. so if you are doing maybe relationship relationship advice content you're doing that for the general public because yes. at least the general are participating in having a relationship or two if you're doing content for let's say how to how to service your car you'll be particularly looking for those people who own or want to own a car mm -hmm. so i'll say the content determines the audience mm -hmm. so what if if you're try if you're new and you're trying to just at least maybe you're, you're trying to test the waters and see what is the right audience my advice would be put three different types of audience okay. thematic audience put maybe something tech-wise, tech put something relationship-wise, and put something maybe food-wise, how to cook. In terms of content? In terms of content. Okay. So maybe three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Upload the contents across your social media handles. Mm -hmm. Then wait for, give yourself a week or a month. Mm -hmm. Then with the, with, the view, with the views that we'll, every content will get, you'll see which one is selling for you. So if people are watching how to, how to cook ah. mostly, I'll suggest that you continue with that because with that. that is seen to be picking within your channel. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I believe that then that's make, you, you've actually like uh, broken it down in an easy way because if you tell someone understand your audience, then I don't know what vision is my audience, especially if I'm just starting, starting off. Okay, yeah, I think that that one, that one has made it way easier. So let's look at um, the aspect of everyone wants to create something unique. I always feel like that one also uh, gears in the aspect of just uh, post, uh, like just uh, prolonging you the aspect of you starting. Yeah. So how can we just go beyond the aspect of I want to create something new. I want to be the first one to originate an idea, like to stand out, which is very important. But it also like uh, pulls you down in a laid back situation where you don't move. So how do you go beyond that? I'd say you, you don't really need to to have an original content to to start because um, we are always told that nothing is new under the sun. Mm, yeah, that's true. So what really happens in content creation is you try to remodify whatever is existing. Mm. Like for example, if you have content, you, you, you shoot content, raw content and you upload, then there's person B who shoots the same content and adds graphics. Then there's person three who adds background music and adds graphics to it. The person who adds background music and graphics, his content, his or her content will be more superior than this other content. Mm -hmm. So, you I also feel like it brings in uh, procrastination. Yeah. The fact that I'm waiting till I get, you see this one good idea, yeah. then I'm just going to start after I get this one. You know, if I get these tools of production, then that's when I start. Let's look at tools of production because uh, when it comes to um, uh, any sort of content creation, everyone wants to look at good content, uh, quality content that is, you know, you want your visual to be on point, the sound to be on point as well. So, and, and unfortunately, <laughs> they don't come cheap. Yeah. So let's look on that from that aspect of affordability. Okay. Um, like you've mentioned, um, the crucial things in content production would be the, the camera, the audio mm -hmm. input and um, maybe the content itself. Yeah. So for the equipment, uh, equipment needed to, to pull out some good content, you can pull out a good content if you use your phone and mm -hmm. you have proper lighting and you have audio that is just at least uh, you, you shoot in a, in, a, in a quiet place. So I'd tell any content creator who's starting and they are low on budget is Use daylight. 
use daylight as your key source of light. Shoot during the day. Shoot in a place that is not not noisy. Uh, there, if if you can't you if you can't buy a lapel mic, you can even use your earphones mm -hmm. as a mic. So then there, are, instead of maybe there there are applications that maybe the Final Cut application. Mm -hmm. You can there are softwares that now. I tell people what Final Cut application is. <laughs> <laughs> Final Cut is a is a software that most professionals use to edit their content. Content, yes. Yeah, but um, with technology evolving, mm -hmm. there are new softwares that are easy to use. I've uh -huh. seen people using them for TikTok, mm -hmm. uh, for Instagram. Quite fast as well. Yes, quite fast. Mm -hmm. uh, saves on the data. So I think uh, you need, uh, you'll, you just use daylight, use, use what you have. Okay. Use what you have. They, they say content is king. Mm -hmm. So if the content is dope, mm -hmm. even if the, the equipment are a bit shifty, they can just work. All right, let's look at the aspect of I have, I have good, uh, you know, followed your advice, right? I have good uh, quality production tools, visual on point, mm -hmm. uh, audio production.